I'm excited about our collaboration with DHA and your products, which are really magnificent and so important. As you know, we were talking about before, how DHA really is a, a blo building block for the neurons to create themselves and synaptic pathways to create ex novo. And I think that's really important, and especially in children and the bonding between children and mothers, but especially in children, I think young brains the young children are the, the children, the, the beings of the future. And I think to have them grow their dendrites and you know create more BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic, faster and earlier in life. Animals as well. Yes. Yes, I think it applies also for you know the pets and the horses and the dogs and, and cats. And I think it's really important to think globally, you know, and go beyond our species too. I think it's really, it's, I think DHA is really, what you're doing is fascinating. Kind of going into another genetic expression is the the Cox genes, the OX, and that's, you know, as, as you know, and, and many people listening, related to inflammation. And it's such a, a yeah. base level measurement, I guess we could say, of how much inflammation is in the body. And as this relates to babies and children, something that I recently learned from a couple of physicians is that the formula that is given to premature babies and babies who are having difficulty eating in hospitals is promoting inflammation. And the reason is because the base oil that is used is soybean oil. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can make the probably logical assumption that it's GMO soy. And so that's while it's going to have, you know, maybe a small amount of the omega-3s, it's high in the omega-6s. And so if we're promoting inflammation with those omega-6s right off the bat for a baby, what is that going to do to the brain in, in developmental stages where it's so important? Because I just recently learned that babies' brains throughout the first year will, per second, create about a million new neurons. And this was a, a study published in, in Harvard that I saw. And just to think about that, one second, one million new neurons and, and just the connections that are being made. And so if there's inflammation happening constantly based on what they're eating, how are they going to develop to their maximal pot potential? And so that's where, you know, the omega-3s and J in particular really stand out because that is basically countering the effects of the omega-6s. Now, people should know that omega-6s are necessary and like arachidonic acid, that's that's a necessary compound for the brain, especially for children. But again, everything in balance and you need to balance it out. And so that's you know sort of what we're doing with this algae oil, this DHA, is balancing that inflammation and giving the brain and the body what it needs. So those neurons develop correctly, the synapses can form their connections and uh, we can just give the baby and the child the best chance to develop their brain and nervous system and cardiovascular system, their skin, the mitochondria. It plays a role with uh, cardiolipin in mitochondria. So, you know, it's just a, just a fascinating thing, but inflammation and where it starts, you know, me recently learning this was just, I mean, really eye-opening to me that so many of these children and babies are being fed pro-inflammatory compounds that are, many of them are genetically modified so how do they how are they given a fighting chance it's to me it's really incredible that even though there's so many children and babies who are fed this, these terrible diets you know for the most part humans still develop but now it's like okay we need to go to the next level and the next level is feeding children babies adults kids everyone really good nutrition so that we can express ourselves genetically, physically, mentally, emotionally in the highest capacity. I have personally taken the HA that you gave me and I think after about a few hours I was looking at my eyes and I'm like, oh, they're not puffy, you know, and I did not understand what it was. And then I later on the second day when it happened again, then I thought, okay, that's really amazing. And then I started putting it on my skin too. <laughs> it's really funny, but it's it's a very good product. So just really, I think DHA. What was 
I remember you were telling me something about the creation that is unique. It has the biggest concentration of DHA available in the market right now. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, with fish oil as an example, the fish eat the algae. The algae is the source yeah. of the DHA and these fatty acids. And when companies have to extract the oil from the fish, they do it through different different processes. And when they do that, it actually changes the ratio, the natural ratio of what's present in algae. It changes the ratio of DHA to EPA to several other fatty acids that are naturally present within that. So what we're doing is we're going straight to the source. We bypass the fish and the fish processing. And because we do that, we get the natural ratio that's present in the algae and we do a water-based extraction. So we're not using hexane, which is also very unique. And as it relates to human physiology, we, the, the DHA within our brains, it's about 90% of the omega-3s. And there was a study published showing that EPA, because this is a big topic as it relates to DHA, is only needed in about 250, 250 to 300 times less the amount as compared to DHA, okay? So we need about 250 or 300 times more DHA than we do EPA. And what we have is we have per serving, just naturally extracted, is 1,000 milligrams of DHA and 10 milligrams of EPA. So that's about a 100 to one ratio. And you know, from the research that I've done, there's no other product or company that has that specific ratio. And that's the closest one that I've found as it relates to human physiology. And so we've got the natural, true strain of algae. We do a water-based extraction and we keep the ratio of those fatty acids where they're meant to be, where nature put them in those quantities. So we're not messing up those ratios with hexane extraction or with CO2 extraction or anything like that. We just keep it natural and, and the way that it was meant to be for the algae and meant to be for us humans. That's brilliant. Yeah, th thank you for illuminating us. That's really amazing. So the question that pops to my mind is how do you, how did you come up with these ideas of ratios? Because it seems to be like, you know, we're now talking about, I was just talking to Robert Edward Grand about four days ago. And we're talking about ratios of angles and ratios of you know numbers. He's a philomath, as you know. And uh, I think it's fascinating to me because I'm I'm definitely not a mathematician. Definitely far away from me. My my brain is creative in different ways, but I'm fascinated by these concepts of ratios. And one of the ways that you get a very specific, like frequency specific training, is by extrapolating numerous ratios algorithmically and feeding them into the program that can give you the feedback. And it seems to me that you're coming up with ratios over and over again to create a better product. And so how did you come up with the idea of just tapping into these ratios and tell us more about your process of invention? So the, the answer, you know, while I wish it was something as extravagant as, you know, running numbers like Robert does in his mind very fast, what we actually did was we just simply look at, okay, what's, what's the natural ratio within the algae? And because of the water-based extraction, we don't change the ratio. And so I didn't really have to do any work per se to come up with a ratio. It's just naturally present there. And then we go off of that. Now, correlating that to us humans, I've just looked at what is, what's the, the biological needs within the brain and the human body for DHA to EPA. And it's just, you know, simply what it is, is it's 250 to 300 times more DHA is needed than EPA as it accumulates in the brain. And so because of that, we just did the, the water-based extraction and it comes up naturally with the 100 to one ratio. So really who did it? Nature or God or divine consciousness? That's brilliant. So you actually decided to just go, you were inspired to go and mimic or observe what the nature did, precisely observe it, not adulterate it, and then, um, 
and then you extrapolate it in a very natural way. So is it true to say that you were actually studying some of the research that was published before and that your observations were based on studies of numerous research studies published before, for example, of ratio of the ABA and DHA available in the brain and what is optimal? And can you tell me more about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely looked at a lot of different studies to understand what we need as humans, what's naturally present in algae, what are the ratios commonly used in fish oils, because those are much different and there's a lot of marketing around EPA and why that's needed. Now, of course, it's important and it's beneficial, but something that I've learned speaking with like, you know, true insiders within this industry who, who really actually don't even want to be named because of this, the, the whole thing about EPA or much of it is simply because the way that it's extracted, let's say fish oil, they've had to manipulate the data and manipulate studies in a way to show that this is, um, you know, not necessarily what we need. So I'll, I'll kind of explain this again, that based on the way they're extracted from fish and even some algae, to some algae oil companies, and this isn't to put any of them down because you know, I'm not here to, to fight with any of them, but based on their extraction methods, it alters the amount of the different fatty acids, so DHA2 EPA. And so because of that, studies have been designed to really, let's say, put more emphasis on EPA when it doesn't actually have to be that way because that's not what nature intended. So it's sort of, it's not that it's not true, it's just that information is being looked at in a different way where um, it's just not necessarily accurate. Yeah. So you found ways of simply non-interfering and then being true to the facts. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's brilliant that you, you know, wanted and had the impetus to actually go and study, you know, because I think that's part of it. People usually perceive these things and say, okay, we'll slap together one, two, three, and... <laughs> it's going to be fine. The fact is that behind all of these inventions usually is stays an idea and then about three to four years of tedious reading and annotating and plotting over Excel spreadsheets and all of those data and then being pounded by our colleagues who <laughs> we ask kindly to, to criticize our stuff mm -hmm. and then um, and studying it with them and exchanging ideas and after about three to four years, then we can endeavor on designing the study and going meaningfully into the forest of the unknown.